Hello, my name is John, and this is the Mask Face Journal, and this is what I read this week. <music> Teen Titans Rebirth by Benjamin Percy and John Boy Myers. Our prospective Teen Titans are one by one being kidnapped by a mysterious individual with a hidden purpose. Okay, that's basically a lie. The individual is not that mysterious and the purpose is quite obvious. There's not a lot of plot here, but what, what you get is some insight into our characters. It's a bit quick and superficial though, as it exists to give new readers a crash course to what these characters are about. I'm a bit worried about the balance of personalities on the team. Right now we have a bunch of immature people and no one to take responsibility. That being said, it seems like it could be pretty good. The art is good, and since there's no story yet, there's nothing to say that it's not going to be good. It doesn't feel like it's going to be taking itself too seriously. Titans number three, written by Dan Abnett and art by Brett Booth. This issue, Wally West versus Abracadabra, guest starring the Titans. Not really complaining though, Wally West is the reason I'm reading this book. It gets a bit confusing as it is impossible to keep track of what each character does and does not remember from their time together. Wally remembers his marriage to Linda, but it's unclear if he remembers the times he fought against Abracadabra as the Flash or whether it's just as Kid Flash. The rest of the Titans don't remember Abracadabra at all. At least the characters are talking about it. What is also strange is that the Speed Force memory transfer thing that happened in the Rebirth issue is not affecting Linda Park. Is that a plot point or a plot hole? The Flash, number 7, written by Joshua Williamson and art by Carmine Diandomenico. This issue serves as both the continuation of the story and the origin of this kid Flash. Kinda. I guess this origin has been the underlying threat throughout this arc. Godspeed's intentions are getting clearer. In a way, he's very much like Hunter Solomon, but instead of trying to eliminate the Flash's friends and family to somehow making a better hero, he instead wants to kill all criminals. He doesn't seem all that concerned about killing innocent people either. This feels like a really quick read. We're jumping from scene to scene very quickly here. And we do also get a lot of things accomplished, story-wise. There's uh, quite a bit of kind of old-school Flash stuff with transferring of speed force, and it's quite enjoyable. Wonder Woman number 7, written by Greg Rucka and art by Liam Sharp. It's strange that the issues set in the past are some of the most enjoyable comics that I'm reading. All the while the issues set in the present are so... meh. I feel that I'm missing something. Like there was supposed to be more of a build up to this conclusion. Sure, the overarching plot of Wonder Woman searching for Themyscira is still ongoing, but this first story set in the jungle seems to be over, and it felt kind of rushed. Maybe it was breaking the show don't tell rule, but I never really got the grasp of the stakes and the motivations of the villains. They're kind of just there. Yes, they're tied to Steve Trevor's mission and to Cheetah, but it doesn't feel like it's enough. Batgirl number three, written by Hope Larson and art by Raphael Albuquerque. Not much to say here. No major complaints, really. Just some fuzzy comic book logic that deafness could be a superpower somehow because of increased concentration ability. The story is beginning to make a little more sense in that the reason Barbara's childhood friend is a target makes sense. It's still a complete fluke that he becomes a target right when Barbara comes back into his life though. As I said, nothing really to complain about. It just goes on. It's alright. Detective Comics, number 941, story by Steve Orlando and James Tinian IV, and art by Andy McDonald. Part 3 in the Night of the Monster Men mini-event. At the end of the previous part, I said that I didn't feel like the situation was that overwhelming just yet. In this issue, things are certainly escalating. The Bat Team has split up to deal with the crisis on several fronts. Batman and Batwoman fights the monsters in the city, Nightwing and Gotham Girl deals with the Blackgate prison, and Orphan and Spoiler and Clayface are focusing on evacuating the citizens from the storm. Their communication gets cut off, and things get worse. Gotham Girl is still traumatized by Psycho Pirate's mind attack, and that has some serious consequences. All in all, pretty enjoyable. Curious to see what Hugo Strange's endgame is. Action Comics, number 964, written by Dan Jurgens and art by Patrick Searcher. Another issue, still no real explanation or even a hint towards an explanation for this non Superman Clark Kent. I'm starting to feel like a broken record on this one. Superman takes this Clark Kent to his Fortress of Solitude to perform some sort of mind scan, only to find out that according to his memories, his story checks out. There's a subplot here about the company that Clark was investigating, Geneticron, and their involvement with the Doomsday Incident. That seems like it's going to lead to something 
apocalyptic. This book has some problems, mainly the way it's doling out its information, in the sense that it doesn't. We've gone several issues now and we've learned basically nothing. I'm still interested. There are some fascinating questions here, but please provide some answers sometime. Maybe it's this bi-weekly format. So anyway, that was what I read this week. Did you enjoy this video? Please like, comment, subscribe and share this video. If you didn't like it or disagree with me, please let me know in the comments. You know how this goes. See you next week. Hopefully.